And here we are. We are on the day four of the local hack day share event, and it has been a great journey up till now. And we are looking forward to more. So in this stream, I have a couple of things to do, and we will be going it, going with it together on this stream. But let's let's dive right in. I'll not waste much time today. Uh, so let us get going. So today, first, we will be taking a look at an awesome community repository that we have so for the awesome community repository we have for our guild uh, that lists all the hackathon projects that all our guild members have been into i'm talking about the eddie hub community repository so we will take a look at that then we will uh, take a look at some of the projects that i submitted for yesterday's uh, dev post submissions and once uh, we are through with all that we will be taking a look at how to create a browser extension uh, so today will be that is the fun part we'll be creating a browser extension our own browser extension and then let's get started and i'll just switch my screens and let's get going so al we already have a couple of people on the chat so Austin Claus says uh, that they are learning Python and this will help. Uh, we created an awesome application uh, with Python for the yesterday stream. Uh, do check it out. We uh, we created a web scraper that gets information for from the COVID-19 uh, hospital bed vacancy portal that the Delhi government has and we created some visualizations uh, data visualization with that and after that uh, also for the photo sharing app that i will be talking about today we used python in that application uh, to accept file uploads and then we are saving it uh, somewhere and then you will be able to use that link and share that with your friends and family and they will be able to share uh, see that photo as well so let's get started so this is the local hack day uh, main website so let us look at the schedule for the day four uh, for day four uh, we have the you know, we have to use the twilio api and some weather api we have to create a kanban board that will be great fun and then we also have to create a mobile app and next day next up we have to do a brand concept with canva and all so that will be fun i guess let us take a look at the leaderboard to see where we are so i am currently associated with the eddie hub guild and we are running second with 4172 points and we have 263 registered members in our guild and let me take a look where i am in this list so for the hacker rank i am looking for my name and here we are so i currently have 66 points and i am ranking uh, 24th on this leaderboard that is great fun this is my first local hack day event and we are already in two 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 digit figures so let us see what are the details that is that are there so okay these are the challenges we have already completed you can also check out the leaderboard if you have a friend or you are competing yourself uh not competing collaborating collaboration comes first code second 
so austin in the chat also says that they want also want to learn web scraping so uh they're asking what do you recommend they should learn after they finished the python basics and okay and they would also love to take part in this event someday and that is what we want we want more and more people joining in on the bandwagon so uh i'll come to this so after you finish the python basics i would recommend uh, you use some of the different libraries that there are like for data visualization you have pandas and numpy you have uh request uh, the request library for making web requests and you can also take a look at flask and django if you want to dive into something web or rec but uh, most of the time you will find you will find the library you 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 have to use if you do uh if you search around for some of the similar projects you will get to know the, which libraries to use and then uh, you have to learn how to read the documentation the uh, the official manuals that they provide uh once you get past that you can create uh, many projects a uh, toy projects follow along some tutorials free code camp is a great resource i'll post a link to that uh, let me search for free code camp on youtube so if i search for free code camp uh, you can follow their channel let me just post a link in the chat so this is the free code camp uh, youtube channel you can take a look at some of the videos that they have posted this is for the basics and once you are uh, through with the basics you have to look on your own for some projects and even do some uh, data analysis on kaggle there are a few notebooks that will be great fun also so these are some of the steps that you could take it's a vast a, a vast area out there and the sky is the limit on this one and as you can say that there are different libraries like we had to use the twilio api even the vonage api that i talked about in one of my youtube videos so uh using those you can create something interactive like you can send sms's you can send otp and validate that build out user authentication systems and i just uh, just that i saw uh, said that sky is the limit here we can do pretty much anything so uh, now let's uh, go into our agenda as well so for the eddie hub community it's an awesome community that are guild that i am a part of so we have this uh community repository that we are maintaining this time uh i guess some of the members also maintained it for the local hack day build event uh, earlier this year so we have this folder structure that for every year we uh, we are compiling all the resources and all the projects that people create so like uh they here some person uh, some people from our guild have uh listed all their projects here so just uh, let us take a look at uh karuna's edb bot so this is this is also an open source bot that replies to tweets like we uh, we made a twitter bot for uh replying with the air pollution information and they created something for the community for ID Hub. And like this, uh, I forked this repo and for the local hack day March event, that is the local hack day share that is currently going on. I forked this repo and I, I put up a pull request. Let me go to that. So there is a work in progress pull request and I am also adding my projects to this repository. So let us uh, take a look at what I am currently working on till now what I have worked on. So this is these are the things I am adding to this repository. So this will be a great place for the community members uh, to put up the code at uh, to uh, this will act like a portfolio of sorts, uh, a hackathon portfolio portfolio and also show how diverse the community is that uh, many people are coming together and building these projects and all of them have the opportunity to list their portfolio 
projects in here we also have some creative assets like gifs uh, gifs not gifs gifs uh, some paintings and creative assets that the guild members have created we are also saving those so we created the covid scraper uh, last time uh, for austin i am putting this on the chat again uh, so we created this web scraper using python and that was fun and then let's take a look at what i have been uh, working on this entire day and th this will be a quick uh, recap of the day so i created this uh, ruby number insight repository project so this is a ruby on rails application and what it does uh, i have shared an unlisted video uh, showing how it works but i will not be able to show you the working of this uh, as it shows my phone number but anyway here there is a html form and if we submit our phone number it uh, uses the vonage number inside api and uh, gives us the information which uh, which telecom network the number is registered to so if you have something to do like if you are porting numbers over and all you want to check whether this number is of is originally from a country or location you can do that as well and then we have this uh, share photos repository that i am talking about uh, it is a app that you can use to share photos uh, photos and we will take a look at that let me actually open it in a new tab and this is the live website that i've hosted on heroku so we have to first log in with github uh, i don't want anonymous people right now to uh, upload all their photos because i will be pulling them down anyway so once the authentication is successful uh, we will have to upload some photograph to this so i'll go ahead uh, into one of my drives and pull up a photo so i'll use this photograph and i'll click on upload now it gave me a url i can click to copy and i copied it to the clipboard let me go to a new tab and go to this so uh, here is that here is the photo that i shared with everyone and this is the url that i got from here i can click on copy and here it is this entire application was built on python itself so as austin was saying in the chat uh this is one of the things that you could build with python also also we have uh hyper triton on the chat hi uh emoji spam is already happening let us take a look at the source code already so uh in this file uh in this application we are using uh, flask and these are the different requirements you can check that out in this repository lhd hyphen share hyphen photos and uh, let me put uh put the link in the chat for austin if we go into the app directory we will see the app uh, which is uh which is a python app it is using flask uh, to create an api and i am using sql alchemy uh, for the database models so this was created using the flask template the major league hacks template so uh, here we have a user that has a username uh, id github id avatar url that is the profile picture and each user could have many photos linked to their account so uh, this is one of the relationships that we are creating here uh, we will use the github service that we uh, that is ex uh, existing in the github module in this uh, project itself and we will use the access token to get the user and if if there is an existing user we will return that otherwise we will create a new user give them a unique id and all and add them to the database and then do the login so and f that was for the user model and for the photo we have just the image url the id unique id and the user id 
uh, that will be a foreign key to the user table if you are uh, if you have a background with databases you would be able to understand that but essentially it creates a reference uh, to the parent of this entity here and then we have the github class and in this get the github class is responsible for uh, doing the authentication with the github api and there we have it we have different settings these are the different uh, environment variables that we are using for the controller uh, auth will do the authentication it i have not made no changes to the authentication uh, file here the, it it was just as is from the template and for the home controller this is the logic that i have used that if the message um, if someone is uploading making a post request then and if they are not logged in we will throw an error otherwise uh, we will go ahead and run some checks and we will create a unique file name and we'll keep the extension intact but we'll change the file name to something very unique and we'll save that to the uploads folder we could have uh, used uh, object storage like amazon aws s3 or something like that but i did not make it complicated i was running short on time so here it is it is a simple bare bones application and we add that photo to the we add that photo to the uh, database and we add a reference to it in the user object and for the uploads we are when uh, we are accessing the actual upload thing so we can just send the file from this upload folder that was about the photo sharing application and then we can take a look at the Twilio open weather thing that of which you I had tweeted uh, right now that we will be taking a look at the at, a, at an application that was created using the Twilio verify API with it OTP Xander uh, in the chat is asking is this a phishing script no this is not a phishing script I'm not uh, saving any more information apart from what github gives me that is only not uh, not even your email address i am just sharing the link to the profile picture and the github id nothing apart from that and for okay so now let us take a look at the twilio open with a app that there is so this is a simple proof of concept uh, for a otp system so if i put my phone number here i will not put the full phone number right now so here is partial phone number now i will switch scenes and uh, fill my number and click on the submit uh, send otp button 8826 that was the first part of my phone number and then i completed my phone number right now you are not able to see that see that but i'm clicking on send otp and once i click on the send otp button what will happen is a request will be sent to the back end and that will send a otp to my phone number so now what uh, uh, so just now i receive a uh, otp in the form of a sms and it says uh if i can show you I don't know if this will be visible or not but essentially I received an OTP from Twilio saying that my verification uh, my verification code is something that is a six digit number so let me put that in first I'll try to put a, a wrong number so i i have received 284826 but i will put 284829 just for fun and then click on submit and what will happen is it will say that the request has failed so if i put in the correct otp now let us see what will happen so i will put 284826 and i'll 
submit it now so now the verification has been successful and i uh, just for fun i had connected two apis together so the verification has been done so we used an otp system and it it worked and if i click on get weather it will pull out the weather for the current lat long that there is this we created on the last to last stream and uh, here we are so this was the twilio verify api in short and what we can do with this there is also a very similar product by vonage also known as the vonage verify api and both of them work really great so these are the two applications and there is a few other things also you can check out the edhub community repository if you want to check out some more projects that i have been working on and now let us take a look at the code for that video verify api so this is the index.js this is javascript this is not python so uh, that was a basic uh, express application and here the actual business logic takes place here that we create uh, we we have to create something called a service id from the twilio console and we will have a reference to that and we will create a verification code for a number that you submit via the form and that goes to the sms channel and you receive an sms and once you have that you uh, and once you click on submit otp uh, we run some verification checks and if the status is approved from the api then we say it is it is successful otherwise it is not successful and for the weather we do this thing that we did for the last to last stream we call the open with the map api with the one call api so that was it for uh, both of those things and let us uh, now get to the interesting bit of today's stream that we are creating a browser extension as promised so let me take a look at the chat again so uh Zandra is asking they joined in late uh, so they did not have a good look at the code it's perfectly fine you can look at the past streams or uh, for a tldr you can visit my github repository or github profile even so uh, and can i help you with the with your code after uh the stream as you have a presentation tomorrow well i guess no that's a no from my side because i i have my classes from 8 30 in the morning and it's uh around 1 a.m right now so i i'm not sure if that will be even possible or not and then austin claus is just greeting xander so that was great uh let us have a quick change of plans and then we can go to the next thing so i'll just come in a bit i am going to grab a bottle of water and we'll see you back we will uh come back and create a chrome extension this time so let me play some music that was a rather short break but uh, here i am again and let us get started with working on that browser extension we will be following along a tutorial that someone else wrote and let us see if that works let us take some chances here 
so i'll go to that blog post again and here we are so how to make a chrome extension the chrome project has an official documentation what are extensions and how can we create that they have this official documentation and they have some samples over at chrome extension samples repository that is great and uh, what are themes and all api reference and in-depth core concepts message passing content scripts there is a lot i guess to this but we will see about that so what are extensions these are small programs that customize our browsing experience like uh, i have this requestly extension and what it what it could do is that whenever the uh, any request that goes from this browser to any other service or something like that we can uh, play around with the headers and all and that is a fun little extension we have our ad blockers those are also browser extensions and there's a lot like netflix party or something like that that is also browser extension itself so let us create one to use more advanced features it requires a lot of googling and stock stack overflow and we have been seeing that in the past few live streams that we are googling a lot and using stack overflow but that is usually what happens when you we are creating a few projects and applications we have to look at some of the reference material that is that there exists so let us make i i like how they use the word intermediate in here but it will interact with our page and it will find the first external link on the page and open it in a new tab okay so what so what i understand is when we uh, open that extension from the menu it will uh, get a reference to the current active tab and it will find for some element in the on that tab if it is a link element like if it is an anchor element the a tag in html then it will find out the reference the href attribute for that tag and create a new tab new chrome tab and open that url in that tab that is what i understand from this so we will have to have an let us just go ahead in the terminal and do something let us create a new folder for this otherwise we will lose track of what they are saying in this blog post so let me create a new folder i'll call it lhd browser extension i'll navigate into that it's a uh, kind of comfortable having the z shell to all this auto completion for me and then we have to create a manifest.json file so let us create a manifest.json file and we will edit that what do we have to enter in that part so we have to use this we have to put this json into manifest.json file that is fine with me let us copy this and paste it here so manifest version is 2 name is my cool extension i'll rename it to lhd browser ext just for fun version 0 0.1 it is a major version is 0 minor version is 1 i don't have any complaints we are just developing the browser extension that's the most possible manifest file with all the required fields filled in so i guess these are the fields that are mandatory to fill and the manifest version should be 2 version 1 is unsupported as of 2014 noted so our extension does absolutely nothing and we know that so let us uh, go ahead we, because we just have a manifest file and it just uh, specifies the name and the version of our extension it has no logic at this point in time so it will do nothing but let us load into chrome anyway as they say 
so we will open up chrome extensions page let me open up a new tab and go to this page and uh, there are a few browser extensions that i have already and what do we have to do we have to click on the developer mode on the right okay so i have already turned that on otherwise of what it allows us the, that we can have the id of that uh, particular extension and then we are able to load and load unpacked extensions we can pack an extension or we can update extensions in the developer mode so let us flip that switch on and what what next we have to go to load unpacked extension let us load an unpacked extension we will uh, navigate to that directory let me go to uh, browser extension and let us open that so it is not a valid json expected token could not load manifest so there we go boom there is a error already so according to this when you change add code, uh, code in your extension and uh, we if we reload that page it will reload our extension so let us first deal with that error before we go ahead we because we are not seeing our extension in that list this is not a valid json file and why is that because have we not saved it we had not saved that file of course it will not be working so let us load an unpacked extension again and now it is showing that our extension is called let me zoom in a bit our extension is called the lhd browser extension the version is 0 0.1 and we have it that is the thing so uh that extension is now in the list of the extensions that we have but it does absolutely nothing and that is expected but we have our browser extension in this list uh the lsd browser extension is on our list and we can pin that to our address bar over here that so that we can easily reach out to that browser extension so on the chat uh, austin plus says rule number one remember to save files and that is why uh we spam controllers every time we make a minor change and that was vim there is no control as in vim otherwise if we would have used vs code we could have spammed controllers a number of times so let us go ahead with that tutorial so our extension is now in the list part one of the war is done then content script let us see what they are talking about a content script is a javascript file that runs in the context of our web page so that means that uh, that javascript file has access to interact with the web page that is currently loaded on the screen so and not every javascript file in a chrome extension can do this we will see that later as they say uh, but the content script uh, as the name says that will be uh, having access to the content on the screen so uh, let us add a content sc uh, script named content.js and we will put this alert call right here so let me not work with vim anymore let's ju let's just open visual studio code and this is the manifest json file that we have now let us create a new file called content.js So once we have content.js then we have to add and we can add anything here so let us just do let us just call woohoo and that will be for our content script right now and we have to inject that script into every web page that we are current uh, we will be looking at so because the content script will be having access to the web page so it has to be injected in some way or the other so for injecting it we need uh, to tell chrome about it that this extension has that script so we need to include that in the manifest file so in the manifest file they say that we have to create a new content script uh p so content scripts 
so for the content script so we will have an array of objects so the, in the first object we have matches and it will match all the urls we will have to see what that notation does i am sure the documentation will have everything as i said that any advanced stuff that you do with chrome extensions will involve a lot of googling and stack overflow and that is fine with me all the urls if i can type that correctly and then we have a javascript file and that is also a list so i guess it is building a list of objects a uh, list of objects or files that that is there in a, in an extension so later when we pack it i assume it will uh, put all of them in an archive or something so this is the file that we had to put there and let us just verify if we had if we have typed everything correctly by just going here and validating it visually validating it it is okay so this is our file and this tells the chrome runtime to inject this content script to every page when we visit using this url pattern if we want to uh, inject a script on only some pages we can use match patterns so let us uh, have a look at that what are match patterns these are urls that begin with a particular protocol let's say and that can contain any number of characters this special pattern uh, all urls will match any url that starts with a permitted scheme so all of the protocols that are listed here will work so uh each match pattern will have all of these things that's uh, the scheme that is the protocol uh host and path so these are the three parts of that permitted scheme so uh, any link that we visit will be of that type only like if we visit a local file on uh, on our desk using chrome that opens up with a file protocol so that makes sense to me and the, here are a few examples of matches so uh, mail.google.com and the http and the non http uh, https and the non https versions of these two this uh, this thing will inject our script only to this gmail so there is this meet attendance uh browser extension so what it does it is it uh, injects the, the the script into the google meet calls only and like uh, discord pre-made extension that there is uh, that allows us to show the discord rich presence on our discord whenever we are browsing something on the web uh, using a web browser what it what it also does is is you it uses a url pattern like if we were only wanted uh, the, the our extension to work on google.com then we will have to uh, put something like this that we have to write that it should only work on www.google.com and this will make sure that our browser extension works on only google and on no other page so if you want uh, to create a specific extension you can do that this way and this uh, this scheme will match any http url so that is a good piece of information that we have then we have to log that url i will skip the jquery bit uh, but anyway they are what they are saying that you can use uh, a content delivery network like uh cloudflare uh, cdn or cdnjs you can download a library if you need access to a specific javascript library you can download that and put it uh on the extension in the extension itself so if you need to use axios uh axios is an awesome http request uh library we can totally use that as well in any of our extension so if, if we want to do that we will just have to download a copy and put it in the manifest file and then uh, then they are you customizing the content script so what they are looking at is uh, they are looking at the first their uh, 
getting a list of all link elements anchor elements on the page that have a http href and uh, they are getting the value of that href attribute and console logging that uh, as in printing to the console whatever link that there is before we go ahead so let me do that those uh, do this in vanilla javascript i guess we should be able to do fine let us delete this let's just load it first we haven't seen how this would look so if we reload this and we go to this and what does it do we have a content.js and it will work on all of our urls and let me just remove it and load it again i guess So there is this browser extension that we have. So now if I click on it, does it do anything? It does nothing. We have to see why is it doing nothing. We have to reload our Chrome extension and every single page now you visit uh, pops up an alert. Did that happen? That did not happen. So did we mess anything up? let us take a look at is there any difference i don't see any difference so anyway let's reload this extension again using their code no this is not working and on all sides and the lhd browser extension i don't know what is happening but let's just go ahead and but if we do not have the if we do not have that alert that why how can we be sure be sure that our content script is working so let's uh inspect that first why is it not working so we have this content.js let us take a look at the manifest the current manifest version is 2 that is okay with us and chrome apps let us see okay so now if i if we do reload it and now works on this page woohoo is working if i reload this it also says woohoo so our chrome extension is finally working so even if i reload this you can see it says woohoo so our content script works fine and then let's go ahead and take a look at what they are saying next so they are getting the reference of the first link that there is on the page let us do this in vanilla javascript now so uh, we will do document dot query selector all it will find out the list of all the a tags and let us take a look at the first element that there is and the add under the href attribute of this so i log i'll console dot log this so let us take a look at what happens so this is the thing uh let us re uh, let us open the br browser console and let let us reload uh no we have to reload this first reload after reloading our extension if we reload the page there we go there, there is the first link of every page can i zoom in on the dev tools i fear i cannot but it is uh it is just printing this developer.chrome.com slash docs slash extensions or something uh, this is the entire url that it is printing to the console so if i reload this so local hackday.mlh.io is the first thing that comes up uh in a, in an a tag on this page 
the errors are not related to our extension but anyway the errors are not for our extension again the our extension is only printing the link to the console so that works we have success at this point so uh we don't need to use jquery chrome injects content script after the dom is lo uh, loaded so that is great for us otherwise if there was no uh, a tag uh, then this would throw an error so we will uh, make a simple check that uh, let us create an a tags list uh, let us say that let eight uh, const a tags always use const wherever possible document dot query selector all and if a tags dot length is uh, greater than zero then only we do this otherwise we don't do anything that looks fine and then what do we have to do that was a content script so that was the first type of script that a browser extension could have so for the next thing we can take a look at the browser action so uh, browser action is a icon next to our address bar so as we were uh, taking a look at this is this l in a square that is appearing right now and it is grayed out uh, so the icon for that extension is defined using the icon.png i guess so and we have to add this to our the manifest so let me do the do one thing let me grab my channel icon and we will use that for our browser extension so give me a moment uh, while i go ahead and copy over my channel icon it is in the in a folder out there somewhere and i have my channel art ready to go i'll copy it over to this folder and i'll rename it as so now i have it here i can now switch my scene this is the channel art that i have and we can put that in the manifest so we have to use the browser action this is the browser action property and in browser action we have to have a default action or a default icon the default icon will be logo.png so we have that so let us reload our extension and why is that not working I don't see our extension here. Is it working though? Yes, it is working. Yes, there is our extension. And that has an icon now. And the name, as you, as you would see that the name is also now not grayed out. And our uh, browser icon is uh, definitely showing up. It is not showing up here. But it is showing up on the address bar let me put something more cons and uh, no noticeable uh, let's say uh, let me go ahead into my directory again and let me pull up another file that will be helpful to see it even better so we'll copy this over and let me reload it as logo this is a jpeg file so we'll use that also so this is the logo.jpg file and now if i reload the chrome extension uh, what will happen is so it is not accepting the jpeg file i guess it only needs png files for its purpose so that does not work but the png definitely works 
yes the png works it does not accept it does not like jpeg files so i'll delete that so as for uh, now we have a browser extension that has access to our let's say uh, the dom that the current web page we are working on we are currently viewing it has access to that and then let's go to the next section to use the browser action what is the browser action uh, so when we click on that browser icon on the address bar then it 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 can do some action and that is known as the browser action and for using browser action we have to understand message passing so content script has an access to the current page but it has a limited access so, and it does not have access to every api that the browser provides or did i say something wrong it has access to every chrome api but it cannot access the current page okay so background script does not have access to the current web page that we are currently looking at but it has access to other all other features so here we are, we are currently learning together sharing and collaborating and this is great so as google puts it content scripts have limitations they cannot use chrome apis and that is understandable like the chrome dot uh, the chrome apis are only uh, workable if you work with the uh, if you have access to the chrome uh, chrome object itself and you don't have the uh, access to the chrome object on front end scripts uh, but you have this extension runtime storage and interna internationalization uh, apart from these apis you don't have access to any other apis on the content script so it will be able to pull a url out of the current page but we that but that uh, it cannot uh, open a new tab or something like that so we have to use a background script to handle that thing so let me make sure our stream is working smooth yes it is smooth and okay so how do we use that you in uh, in order to communicate between the background script and the content script we have to do message passing so let us take a look at the chrome documentation for message passing what it does is so okay we can have a request from a content script to the background script and the background script will listen for that okay and then we can do that the other way around as well so we'll add a add a background script so for the background the, that was the content script we can also add a background script we will just say background and it will have one script only it does not take a list it just takes an object that has scripts and that takes a list of the scripts that there are background.js let's say and i'll just delete all the extra white space here and there we have it uh, we will then add a background.js file in the current folder background.js and then let us see what it does we have to have a listener an on click listener on the browser action so chrome dot we have access to the chrome object on the background uh, background script so we have access to the chrome object and we can do something like chrome dot uh, browser browser action then once we have an action to that uh, and reference to that then let us see the, what uh, is there any documentation for the chrome browser extension a uh, browser action object so here it is this is the chrome dot browser action documentation api reference so this is the manifest file and there can be a default pop-up as well we will see about that and then it does not uh, say anything else so on click listener there is a event called on clicked so they are talking about that event only on clicked browser action on clicked dot add event listener let's just say that it takes a tab and we use a nifty arrow function and then it uses a chrome query 
to uh, send a message to the active tab so what does it do let us take a look at the chrome.tabs object the chrome tabs api allows us to interact with the browser tab system so okay we can query they have used the query so it will ha get all the tabs that have the specified properties or all the tabs if all no properties are specified so what are they using they are using the active is true and current window is true so they are getting the current active tab that there is so we can also use that so chrome dot tabs dot query and this tab that we are querying it should be active we set that to true and it should be in the current window once those conditions are satisfied then we will have a tabs uh i guess a list of tabs let me revisit that sample code yes we will have a list of tabs and we will get the first active tab out of that so let us say um const active tab is equal to tabs this first tab the first active tab in on our chrome window so we have uh shriram shrikant on the chat hey um awesome to have you back you have been a regular viewer for uh, some time now kudos and uh, then let's go to the next part what they're saying they will have to say uh, we are sending a message from one content script to a tab so let us take a look at the tabs api again so if we uh, take a look at the chrome tabs api once again and if we search for the send message uh send message method that they are talking about in this particular blog post so they are using the send message it's uh, it sends a message to the, the content script in the specified tab so this is a uh, background script that we are currently working on and this send message method can be used to send the message to a content script on the tab and we covered content scripts a little while ago so uh, we have to send a message using chrome.tabs.send message and to what tab are we sending this message to we need a id of the tab the tab id that we can get from this tab object this is a list of tab objects that we can get from chrome so we will have this tab.id specifically active tab.id and what are they talking about next and then we send the message object so this uh, message message uh, will be something like let's say this message should be a json ip a json jsonify able object so we will put a json message in there so message uh browser action clicked so we will just send a name of the event that took place browser action clicked so this is just for our reference chrome does not know what message we are sending so that is done and that is all they are talking about at this point and this will send a arbitrary json payload so the message that we sent this part of the message that was an arbitrary json uh, jsonifiable object that we just saw and this could be anything and we have used message for simplicity and now we need to listen for that in the content script so we were listening for a browser action in the browser script itself uh, and we were looking for it on the browser scope on the context of the entire browser if uh, we uh, if we are looking for the if we click on the chrome extension we are looking for that event but now we will be listening for an event that is being emitted from our background script itself so this is intra extension if you would like to call it that uh, but then let's go to the content.js script so now uh, 
at the end of the script i will do so they are using the chrome.runtime api let's just let's just google it again it is better to research about what we are doing before we run some arbitrary code so we use the runtime api to retrieve the background page return details about the manifest and listen and respond to events so this is the part that we are looking for listening and responding to events so on message that there, there are events on message yeah this is the event that we are looking for and it is fired when a message is sent from an extension process or a content script so uh here we have chrome dot runtime dot on message add event listener okay so tab 9 was correct this time it is add listener not add event listener and that will accept a function this will be a function essentially it uh, it accepts a function this add listener method will accept a function and it will take a message object a sender message sender and a send send response so what they are what are they using for this so okay they are not making they're making it no more complicated than it already is so we will have just message did that sound right i guess no but then let's just go ahead with it the send response will be a callback i am assuming and the message and sender will be what it is shown right here so the message could be anything that is sent by the calling script and this, we have a reference to the sender so now what we can do is uh, what they are doing that if the request message is we are uh, so request has that arbitrary json that we passed from background script and, and now in the content script we are just having access to that entire json object so if request uh, this message dot message we if we can do that we uh, we can do that as well or they are using request but i will do message dot message uh if that is equal to they are using triple equal to uh, to check for the type as well we might as well use that so action clicked if the event is the message is the message that we sent from our background script is action clicked then what can we do then we can do this business logic then we can get the current uh, the first script in the entire web page and then we will console log it and all of the code is now in the listener and we have a background listener this is the background script and this is the content script and the manifest has details about both of this both of those so let me reload this extension we have access to this and let me just reload one of the pages and you notice that nothing has been printed to the console but i if i click on this something should have happened but that did not happen and that is something we should investigate what went wrong if the message is action clicked did we do something wrong right here i guess no but we will see so this active tab dot id we sent a message let me we are console logging it anyway so let me just copy paste whatever they have written and then we will see where we went wrong we'll use their code first what are they doing with it let us comment all of our code and run their code okay th there are errors okay so our code was correct in fact we can have access to the error console here i did not know that we could have uh, looked for errors right in the chrome window itself but there are errors that there is a type error that there is no add event listener i guess it is event listener and not add event listener yes that is add listener not add event listener so this is where we went wrong 
great debugging experience so far let us reload that again but that did not do anything let me delete this error now and then let us go for it again so now it works we have our original code and it now works we have now the first link in the entire uh let's say we have the first uh, link of the web page when we click on this we can get access to that we can instead of console dot logging it we can make it an alert and that will look good on the stream itself so if i reload it now and if i reload this nothing is happening but as soon as i click on the uh, browser extension icon then it is showing the current url the first url in the entire page for that matter so for the next thing they are opening a tab when this url is getting we have the url now we need to just create open a new tab so they are using the chrome.tabs api so we'll just look take a look at that create a tab we have a create method and that creates a new tab and we will make it active i guess so okay it defaults to true anyway so okay so open a tab id that is also optional so what is required nothing is required so it will open a new tab by default i guess so if we do something called can we do this here we don't have access to the chrome tabs api because that we use the chrome tabs api on the background script so are they doing this no we can't grab the url here's the idea yeah they uh, state the exact thing that i just spoke that this can be only used in the background and we'll have more we have to add more message passing to let it open the tab let the background script open the tab so we will send a message to all of the background scripts i guess so you will we have the access to the chrome runtime because using we are having an access to this so uh, we will do a chrome dot runtime dot send send message and this message this time will be this should also be a jsonifiable object and this message will be open tab and the url for that will be let me just uh, the url will be the a tags dot href let me just space it out a little bit so it will look good so once we have that then we can that is all there is to it so we can now listen for this so how do we listen for this we have to listen for the runtime so chrome will send this to the runtime the entire browser message queue that there is it will send the message to the entire message queue and we can just listen for that uh, message in that message queue itself so uh, in the runtime channel only it will send the message so on message we can use so add listener to that and do we have a message directly no we have that message this is the listener and is it deprecated i guess yes but we will see chrome dot message it is not deprecated here so why is visual studio code complaining about it so message dots uh, message sender and send response then uh, the exact same listener object that we had in one of the others i guess this is some spam to uh, twitch spam that they are saying 
to uh, go to YouTube and search for Otters. So, uh, we will not derail that it's with the for a spammer, but then let's go ahead and on message listener if we have this if we have a message dot message if the message text is equal to uh open tab if the message dot message will be open tab and uh, then we can create a new tab i guess so we will have dot create and this will be the url for the new uh, new tab i guess and yes the url will be this will be a object so the url will be message dot url are they doing the same thing yes they are doing the exact same thing so uh, now let us reload our extension one more time and let us reload so now if i click on the action uh, if i click on the extension a uh, alert message comes up and a new tab is opened with the url so our browser extension works as expected so if i reload this page and I click on this, there is an alert message right there, and a new tab is opened up. So I'll uh, remove this alert message from the content script, and that will go away. And I'll put the if, if the if condition should uh, dictate whether this message should be sent or not, otherwise, we will have an error because there will be no uh, anchor tag left i'll quietly ignore ml random numbers i'm not willing to do that on stream because this will go to youtube directly so our uh, application uh, the browser extension works so new tab is created as soon as this happens so let us uh, take a look at uh, one of the apps uh, let us run this one of the uh, apps that we created in the last uh, few streams itself let us open that uh, sharing application so is it about copyrights no it is not about copyrights it is uh, about let's say we are being professional here so if i run this on this tab so the first link that comes up is uh this i guess this logo itself will be the first anchor tag in the entire web page so whenever i click on my chrome extension this will come up a new tab will will be opened so we successfully created a browser extension congratulations yeah ml random numbers so wrapping it up uh we have the content script with us we have the background script with us and there is the full directory structure they used jquery i did not use jquery i just use vanilla javascript and it was easier for me i guess so that is why i have used vanilla javascript itself and more on how to make a chrome extension there is an entire full-blown documentation on how we can uh, how what whatever what are the concepts that go behind an extension like there is security we can use service workers like there would there could be a timer service running after uh, if, 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 if we have to create a pomodoro timer like if uh, we have to remind ourselves to uh, take a break after every 20 minutes we can create a background service worker for that after every 20 minutes it will send a message to our content script and our content script will uh, put up an alert saying hold up you need to take a break what does it do it does not take a screenshot of the page it searches for the first link in the entire uh, web page 
so if we uh, click on the uh, browser extension like uh, browser extension icon if we click on that uh, it finds the first link in the entire page and opens up a new tab with the link that there is on the page uh, we could do anything with it really like we can open uh, google and search for some terms on the web page sky is the limit we can also change the background color if you want we can change the fonts on the web uh, on the web page uh, whatever uh, we can do anything when we click on the uh, browser extension icon because that will send a browser action event and that will be handled by the background script and then that will send a message back to our content script yes you can definitely do that you can make an extension to remind yourself to watch others videos not others it's auto videos okay weird but anyway that was how we could make a chrome extension and let us take a look at how this fits into our uh, fits into our uh, local hacked event we have to create a browser extension we have a challenge that many of us rely on browser extensions and we have to create our own using the web to make our web experience better so this is this was one of the bare bones uh most bare bones and basic uh, browser extensions that we could have created and uh that was it for right now let me take a look at the chat again if there is something new i'll take a look at them in my free time when i get some sleep i guess i am sleep deprived at this point in time and i can say that very uh, and i'm proud of that because i've been working on these awesome projects for the last few days and uh, it's the fourth day i am streaming uh, streaming continuously and for uh, the like there are very uh, innovative challenges that we have apart from programming we have also challenges like we have to create a video teaching others a skill so that is one thing create a kanban board to manage one of our projects we can design a season mascot uh, we can uh, draw our own cartoon or avatar we can learn about ai we can even take a break from hacking and take a walk read a book anything and we get points for that and uh, there is this leaderboard and uh, let me take a look at where i am it has not changed yet so i am still at rank 24 out of i guess many people our guild is currently running second at 4175 points and that was it for the stream okay so if you have any questions uh, do drop them in the chat let me take a look at that otherwise uh, I'll call it today and see you soon. So I'll just, I guess I'll play just some music while I go away. Have a good night, uh, everyone else in the chat, whoever uh, is watching this live.